Hello, today we'll be looking in depth at staircases in dwellings and the guidance in approved document K. Fortunately, it is one of the easier approved documents to understand with lots of explanatory diagrams. Since the introduction of national building regulations in 1965, staircase design has been a fundamental part as those initial regulations concentrated on health and safety matters which are still considered as core aspects of compliance today. Staircase design is so critical in domestic situations. ROSPA has identified that about 700 people die every year from staircase related falls. To put this into context, that's about the same number as are killed most years in fires in the UK. But because these falls tend to happen to one person at a time, and because they are often elderly, you are less likely to hear about them. And, like many people, I can personally vouch for how dangerous staircases can be, having fallen down the staircase at home a couple of times in the last 15 years or so. So, what does Building Regulation Requirement K1 say? Let's take a look. Stairs, ladders and ramps shall be designed, constructed and installed as to be safe for people moving between different levels in or about the building. It is a wholly functional requirement, but some interpretation is needed around the limits on application. Basically, external steps leading to an entrance also usually need to comply, so it's not just internal staircases. But steps forming parts of landscaping will not need to comply. We see a lot of drawings that show a new house or an extension but don't account for outside ground level changes or sloping sites, etc. This can become a problem if the design of any steps from the outside ground level to the inside has not been agreed in advance. If in doubt as to whether outside steps need to comply, ask your building control body the question. Please also bear in mind that in the case of new houses, approved document M also needs to be considered, as in most cases, a level principal entrance is expected these days. Most of the guidance for designing compliant staircases is in approved document K. There are other alternate design guides, including the BS5395 series, but you won't normally need to refer to this in a domestic situation. At the back of part K, in appendix A, there are definitions describing the key elements of staircases, including the rise, the going, and the pitch. These are also illustrated in diagram 1.1. Table 1.1 of Part K describes the three basic types of stair. Private stairs, general access stairs and utility stairs. Today we are really only looking at private stairs in domestic dwellings. For all staircases the key relationship is between the rise and the going. Table 1.1 gives both minimum and maximums for both and states that two times the rise plus the going, must be between 550 and 700 millimetres for all buildings. For private domestic stairs, a maximum pitch of 42 degrees is also stipulated. Approved document K states that within any single flight, there should be consistency in both the rises and goings, but flights separated by landings can differ from one another. Particular attention is advisable at the top and bottom of staircases where they meet floors, where you should take into account any differences between the floor finishes. Open risers are acceptable within dwellings, provided that the treads overlap by 16 millimeters or more, and as long as no gap exceeds 100 millimeters in diameter. Generally, in staircase design for all buildings where children may have access, all gaps should be such that a 100mm diameter sphere cannot pass through. This is considered to be the size of a small child's head in order to avoid accidents. Headroom is also considered, and a minimum of 2 metres should be achieved for all staircases in all buildings, including dwellings. This is measured from the pitch line of the staircase. Loft conversions are an acknowledged exception to the 2 metre requirement, but only if there is not enough space to achieve it. In these instances, minimum height should be at least 1.9 metres 
along the centre line of the stairs and can reduce further to 1.8 metres at one side. Something that we often get asked in relation to domestic projects is, what's the minimum width of staircase that I need to achieve? In dwellings, there is no minimum width in approved document K, but practical considerations such as moving furniture should be taken into account. Also, think about the space to give assistance to an older or younger member of the family, as a very narrow staircase may make this more difficult. You may also need to consider requirements contained within Part M for some new dwellings. Landings can cause issues on site and they should always be as long as the staircase is wide and provided at the top and bottom of every flight. There is a limited exception for cupboard door swings over landings as shown in diagram 1.7 and only in dwellings, a room door is allowed to encroach on a landing at the bottom of a flight as per diagram 1.8. A door within 400 millimetres of a bottom step is not acceptable and this includes the door swing, not just the door in its closed position. Handrail and guarding design is also an important factor and the guidance in diagram 3.1 for single family dwellings should be followed in relation to domestic properties. This requires a minimum guarding height of 900 millimeters for staircases, landings, ramps, and the edges of internal floors. But, and this can cause confusion, any external balconies require a minimum height of 1100 millimeters. A staircase or landing handrail can form the top of the guarding if the heights match and the handrail should be between 900 millimeters and 1000 millimeters above the pitch line or floor for ergonomic reasons. Something to be aware of on sloping plots is that there may be internal steps within the entrance story. Paragraph 1.37 provides guidance stating that if there are three or more risers a handrail on both sides is required. In domestic situations, providing guarding design that is suitable for children is vital. And paragraph 1.39 states that guarding should not be climbable and is usually interpreted as meaning avoiding any horizontal bars or anything that might act as a foothold. And a 100 mm diameter sphere should not be able to pass through any part of the guarding. Although this paragraph refers to buildings where children under the age of five might be, building control bodies usually interpret this as applying to all domestic dwellings, irrespective of whether the current owners have young children or not. Spiral and tapered stairs are also considered within Part K. Most domestic spiral or tapered stairs will be under one metre in width. And in these cases, the going should be measured along the centre line, even if the stairs are in a rectangular space. A typical example being domestic winders, as we usually refer to them. Consecutive tapered treads should have the same going, and where a stair consists of both straight and tapered treads, ensure that the going of the tapered treads is not less than the going of the straight treads along the centre line. That just about brings us to a close, but before we do, there are a couple of exceptions to what we've been talking about, applicable in very limited domestic circumstances. Alternating tread stairs can be used in one or more straight flights, never curved or spiral layouts, and only to gain access to loft conversions, where there is not enough space to install a regular staircase. Such an alternating tread stair should serve only one habitable room plus a bathroom or WC, as long as it's not the only WC in the dwelling. Alternating tread staircases should follow the guidance in diagram 1.10 and paragraph 1.30. Importantly, they require handrails on both sides. We actually see very few alternating tread staircases. 
The same restrictions also apply to the use of fixed ladders. These are only suitable for accessing single room loft conversions and must have handrails both sides. There may be some circumstances where a well-designed ship's ladder may be preferable to an alternating tread staircase. If you have any questions, please get in touch via the number that's on screen now. And if you like this video, there's a button just for that. Thank you for watching.